Hi, welcome to this snippet video. Uh, we're going to be learning how to calculate our um, present value factor uh, in two different ways. Well, first, we're going to do the book way, and the second way we're going to do is the way it's calculated algebraically. And um, if you are anything like me, I would rather do it algebraically because if you do it this, if you do it algebraically, um, it, it will make your life so much easier because it's it, you'll get it right every single time. Um, but first, let's do it the, the book way calculating present value interest factor is going to be uh, the formula is taking our init initial investment. And then we're going to divide that by our annual net cash flows. Um, and then we're going to look up the present value factor for that. So let's go ahead and um, <clears throat> excuse me, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's say our initial investment is um, uh, initial investment is going to be twelve thousand dollars and nine dollars. This is I'm getting this number from a, a book example. And it's probably because it's going to calculate it cleanly, okay? But I'm going to show you how to do it next, how to do it, and we don't care. So uh, let's set up what we did in um, year. Um, Go one, two, three, and we'll do three years. And our cash flow, um, cash flow will be uh, five thousand. This is the method we're using right now. It's equal cash flows. So that's what we're looking at. Um, and then we need to find out what our um, our uh, internal rate of return is going to be. We're just going to take. The initial investment and we're going to divide it by the cash flow. it's got to be equal in order for this to work 2.4018 so what we're going to do is we got to go find that interest factor from our present value interest factor we're going to go to the annuity table present value of an annuity that's what we're looking for all right and let's see if we can find that uh number here uh for 2.4018 um, if you know how to use the tables, you're going to know that um, 2.4, these go down as they get bigger. So we're going to need to go down to this one. 2.4018. Here we're close. 2. Oh, 2.4. I'm look, I don't know what my brain was doing. I was thinking 4 point something. I don't know why. Um, there it is. 2.4. 4018. So we're looking at an IIR of 12%. Okay. So there's our interest rate. Um, what happens if we need to do it for unequal cash flows? Well, let's get into that. I'm going to create a new spreadsheet here. And basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be calculating IR, IIR based on our um, or getting our interest factor, I should say, from uh, doing it algebraically. So if you you know I, I switched off this too prematurely. Let's take it all again and do this, and then let's um, let's use the function ability of Excel. And go IRR. Oh, whoops. Um, all right, it's probably going to want us to make it to where these line up. Let's just do that. Okay. And then um, equals IRR. Um, yes. Oh. All right. Some functionality is. Oh, it's because it's saying it's a percentage. We want. To, oh, we do want a percentage though. Sorry, Excel's being fun with me. Um, I think it was because I did this. Yeah, there it is. Okay, I was wrong because 
Um, negative, I forgot, but th this is an outflow. These are inflows. So our IIRR is 12%. I'm just kind of, oh, see, there's where you start seeing the rounding issues right there. But 12% is basically what we're looking at here. I wonder, just because they had me do 12.0 or 12009, let's just do 12,000. I don't know, it's still 12%, so I don't know why it mattered that they had it as nine, but whatever. Um, so that's how we do that there. Um, oh, yeah, I don't care about that. So that's how we calculate the IR that way. Um, but what about the present value interest factor? Let's calculate the present value interest factor. Um, let's go ahead now and do this. And let's just say we have a situation where we're gonna have I, uh, our interest is, because it's not always gonna be 12%, 10%. Let's say it's 12.5%, okay? And then, did I spell interest right? I now have to know. I don't know that that looks right. I might be right. I guess it is. Sweet. Um, I don't know why that looks wrong. Interest is 12.5%, 12, 12, 12 and the number of periods, let's say, uh, is gonna be six periods or six years. Oh. All right, so the way we're gonna calculate our present value interest factor um, is we're gonna use, the, we're gonna do the algebraic method here. Um, and so we're gonna go ahead and set up a formula you know, better what better yet, let's um let's take this out um to a whole problem so you guys can actually make this as a model uh that I think you will like. Um let's say um let's do inconsistent years first. So let's go years, year one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, and let's keep it a little simple. Um let's say uh cash flow. And uh, let's say in the year one, it'll be uh, 5,000, 6,000, 8,000, 12,000, 9,000, 7,000. Okay, let's just make those our cash flows. So we need our present value interest factor for these cash flows. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at it for the individual annual one. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a formula here. We're going to go equals and we're going to say, um, one divided by one plus the interest period. And then we're going to raise that to the number period here. We're going to lock B1 in place. And I want to make sure that this does the, um, it should anyway, but I always like to put the parentheses anyway. For those of you who know the order of operations of math is please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Please or parentheses excuses the exponents. Uh, my dear math and uh, or multiplication division. Uh, Aunt Sally add and, and subtract. That's the order we do them in. But uh, I always put in the parentheses just to make sure that they're going to do it first. So that's why I added that there. So our present value interest factor at 12.5% is 0.8888889. Okay. Um, I did it this way. So that when I drag this down here, it's gonna give me all of these present value interest factors. Now, how do we know if this is correct or not? We don't, right? Until we come over here and we put in 10. Now let's come over here and check our numbers here. Do these line up, oh, oops, let's go up to our 10% um, is right there. Let's check our numbers here, 9091. 909, it would be one. Let's go ahead and shrink this down so we can kind of compare apples to apples. Whoops. There it is. 8264-7513-6830-6209. Look at that. We are spot on, except ours are gonna be precise. We will be have more accurate numbers than we would using the tables. And that's why I do this. And the reason I set this up is you can change this interest or uh, to whatever you want. You could change the periods to whatever you want, okay? 12.5%, I could say um, equals if, oh, my computer's like starting to remind me of all these 
oh, do you do this? Do you do this? So if, well, we always start off with one. So we'll leave that one there. Giggles. If, um, this, I'm sorry, I'm giving you a really complicated one. If this is greater than this, or no, if, if that's, let's do, if that's equal to this, then nothing. Otherwise, we want to take this plus one. We're going to lock B2 in there. Okay. So that gives us two. Look at that. Why are you giving me a value pound? So if I come up here and say 10, look at that. 12, I can change all these. Five. Okay, I can change however I want. I don't understand why this is giving me the pound sign. I'll have to look and see why that's the case. Um, I'll look into it. It's no big deal. Sorry, I was really thinking this one. Uh, I, I can clean that up. But the point is, is that you can make this do whatever you want. Uh, and you can have different numbers in there, different percentages, and it will give you the proper numbers there. Now, what if we want to do this for an annuity, okay? Let's do this for an annuity. I'm going to copy and paste or move and copy this, move it to the end. And and let's start. Let's do this as though it were an annuity now. Okay, that these are all going to be the same cash flows. And so let's say years. Um, well, we got to get rid of all this now. Uh, it's not going to matter what. Um, I do ten. Oops, I knew I was going to do that. Dang it. All right, present value interest factor. This time we're going to change this up. All right, let's do this new formula here. Let me just get that formula correct. We're going to take um, one minus one divided by one plus the interest raised to the periods. I actually want to add in another parentheses there, okay. Um, out of parentheses, out of parentheses, divided by the interest. Well, there's our present value interest factor. Let's check it out for 10 periods. This time we're gonna scroll down to here. Actually, let's do nine periods, okay or excuse me, uh, 9%, and do it for 10 periods, 6.4177, if we compare apples to apples, there it was, we got it, okay? So this way is much better, and in this situation, because of it's an annuity, you don't need any of this other stuff. It's just basically you're calculating the present value interest factor, and then to finish off both tables, you just take this and multiply it by that, and that's your present value of, the, of your cash flows. All right, and so if we were to finish off this table, um, we would just go equals this times this, and we would drag this puppy down. Um, and then maybe we had one down here where it would sum it all up. Let's do that there, equals sum. Uh, and now we have a model, okay? Now we're working with a model when we could have initial investment, and then we would have uh, working capital, and then you could put those in. Remember, you're putting those in as a negative. Um, and then you would have um, net present value. And you're looking like uh, this is a good project. Okay, so though, I'm sorry, this, these snippets were a little longer than most, but I think they're beneficial. Um, so uh, that's kind of how we would, uh, would want to set all that up. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I paused the video because this thing was driving me nuts. So I had to do a little bit more of a complicated 
uh, formula in here. Uh, basically, I had to reverse what I was doing and, and make sure that it was doing every analysis check I needed it to be done. So now, uh, if, if I have 10 periods up here, it'll reflect it better. Um, you know, it'll give me whatever number I need. Um, and then uh, what I could do with this one is I could create an if uh, equals um, if this, oops, if this equals this, then this, otherwise do that calculation. Okay, I just missed a zero. Oh, whoops, it didn't do something wrong. Oh, what happened? I hit the wrong button, I think. If A equals this, then don't do anything. Otherwise, do that calculation. That should work. Yep, okay. So now let's see this. This is how you make models and like you get to use them forever. See how it, it erased that one? And and let's 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 uh, let's get crazy here, okay? All right. You know, all the way down there. Um, and then let's fix this too. Equals if that equals nothing, do nothing, otherwise do that calculation. Well, that's why when I hit that, I thought I went to the end and it didn't do that last time. Let's drag this all the way down now. Okay. So now, the only thing that we would need now is this cash flows. This is basically all we have to enter in is whatever the cash flows are for this model. And I can delete that. But when I come up here and I say 10%, and I say 20 years. Oh, it's because I didn't drag this down yet. So I can get to 20 years. All I got to do is come in here and just type in the cash flows. Even if they're equal, if it's just one and I don't, and I'm lazy and I don't want to do it, I could just do 8,000 and I can just go like this, hit equals, and it's going to be 8,000 all the way down by dragging it. There it is. Sum it up for me. Type in my, oh, what was that? Initial invest me. There it is. Working capital, plug in these. I would like, I like to gray these out so I know I have to enter them. Basically, everything else will function for me. No matter what my model is, no matter what I need, I have my formulas and everything intact. That's why we do this. Because what if I did this and my initial investment was, 50,000, whoops, let's do that as a negative, okay? And my working capital was 25,000, okay? Now, now all of a sudden I'm at a negative net present value there. Now what do I gotta do to make this work? Maybe I need to increase my sales price, okay? I do that once, boom, all of a sudden we're, we're in business, okay? And I'm really, I'm sorry, I really am kind of a, a particular about my numbers and how things look on my models. I want them to be functional. So, and I will color that all the way down to here because all of those would work. So I hope this helps. I hope you enjoyed this model. I know this again is a longer snippet than you might have otherwise had, but I find this way much more satisfying than doing it the way some of the book that says or um, typing all this stuff in by hand. This is much, much better way to do it. These should be formatted as you can do it as either dollars or um, or as the comma. I don't care really. Uh, I would just get rid of the change because it's distracting. When you're dealing with this kind of stuff, um, you you wanna you wanna be dealing with the right the right stuff. So, all right. Well, that's it for this snippet video, you guys. Have a good one. Um, we'll see you guys later. Take care.